in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hi, welcome. This is Doug Wilson. I'm the President and CEO of the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore. And you're watching PAC 14 and you're watching the Community Foundation Spotlight. And with me today is Katie Travers from the Ward Museum. And she's got a very interesting uh, event going on right now as, long, as well as all the other exciting news and happenings at the Ward Museum. So that's what we're going to talk about. And so welcome, Katie. Thank you. Uh, but before we start, why don't you tell us a little bit about Katie, you know, your background and what you do, how you got involved with the Ward Museum, that kind of thing. Sure. Um, well, I actually just finished my master's in social work, so it's not really connected. But during my master's program, I worked for the Ward Museum as a graduate assistant. Mm -hmm. uh, and then towards the end of my contract, they asked me to stay on to help um, do some exhibit work while we had uh, someone out. Mm -hmm. And so here I am. Great. So tell me a little bit about the, uh, what's it called, the Artistic Expression in Nature. Yes, uh, it's Ward very Museum exciting. We have an exhibit going on right now. Uh, it's called Artistic Expressions of Nature. It's hosted and put on by the Gallery of Artists. Right. Um, and they are a really cool group of six artists that have each unique crafts, and some of them I've never even seen before. Um, and it's really exciting. They come together all over the country and host these exhibits. Um, and their main goal is conservation efforts and getting awareness about wildlife and things like that. And, um, and so what happens is when they exhibit, part of the proceeds for all the art sold get, they help the host museum as well as a special conservation effort. Right. Yeah. And? And right now, they're at the Ward Museum. So That's right. some of the proceeds are helping the Ward Museum and some are helping the Community Foundation. That's right. Yes. That's terrific. Tell me a little bit, tell me a little bit more about this artistic group that goes around, the six artists. Sure. What, what, are, what kind of an organization is uh, that? Well, right now, we have there's six artists that are exhibited. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we have Sally Maxwell, who is a scratchboard artist, which is really cool. That's, yes, that yeah. was cool. Go because ahead. Um, I had never heard of scratchboard, and I know a lot of our mm -hmm. um, visitors have never heard of scratchboard. So that's really cool, and she's able to show what it is and how it's done, and then there's information about the methods and the process, and it's a really... Why, can you just tell us a little bit about what scratchboarding is? Because if you sure. haven't seen this art, and I encourage all of our viewers to go over there and go to the Ward Museum and check out this exhibition. It's unbelievably fabulous. Sure. What it is, is essentially she has special tools and she literally scratches out of the medium and then in where the scratch is, you can paint different colors. And so you'll see on some of her art that's with wildlife creatures, she literally has to scratch out every hair that's on some of these animals. And so it's just magnificent. My goodness, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So you're getting a benefit the, from the proceeds from yes. the sale of this mm -hmm. art, right? As well as the Community Foundation, and we're very pleased about that. We have uh, an, an environmental fund that the money will be used for to support uh, organizations that support environmental causes. Mm -hmm. So we're the beneficiaries beneficiaries, you're the beneficiaries, but I understand that the exhibition is going to be at the Ward Museum until September, s September until 8th. And that the artists were kind enough to allow us to continue to reap the benefits of getting us a, a portion of the sales. So yes. go buy art at the Ward yeah, Museum, we right? Had a great event with great turnout this weekend where the artists uh, gave some lectures, and yeah. so they talked about their their art, um, and then they are staying on exhibit through September. Fabulous. Yeah. Well, this is all pretty exciting stuff. Well, how did these artists get started? Well, each artist has a different story. Um, so I talked to some of the artists about how they began. Mm -hmm. um, Dale Wheeler, who was exhibited in the exhibition, right. um, is a stone sculptor, and he has a really interesting story because his father was a very world-renowned, very well-known uh, colorist. Oh. And his father actually asked him not to get into the art business because it wasn't financially rewarding. Yes. Uh, and so Dale, you know, managed those respectful wishes for a very long time. And then it, he said it was about 20 years after his father passed. He just couldn't resist the temptation anymore, and he started getting into stone sculpting. Wow. Um, and he has just fallen in love with it. and 
now that he is in it, he is glad that he did, and he doesn't mm -hmm. regret waiting until when he did because he can appreciate it even more. Lovely. Yeah. Um, so it's really it's it's really interesting. And then we have another artist, James Gary Hines, the the second. Uh huh. Um, who is actually the husband of another artist in the mm -hmm. exhibit. Okay. And he started um, taking pictures for his wife. Right. As reference pieces for her acrylic paintings. Right. And eventually, uh, he started getting so many compliments about his own photography that he started doing it for himself. Right. And so now he is his own artist and he is exhibited in the War Museum. Oh, that's fabulous. And these is. are beautiful pictures. They are. I, they're so gorgeous. I guess you can't call them pictures, right? So they're photographs. Yeah. I don't know. They're Photo miracles art. almost. <laughs> they are that. Listen, can you tell me the, the, all of the, I know that the art uh, is related because there's a focus on nature and, in, and environmental uh, concerns and preservation and conservancy and all that kind of stuff. But it seems to me a lot of the animals that were in the art were very exotic yes. animals. Mm -hmm. Can you what's what's going on there? Well, most of the artists have traveled to extremely exotic places like Kenya and Tanzania and you know South America and mm -hmm. all these different places. And they really they have a commonality in the fact that they would really like to help the conservation efforts, as I right. mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that a lot of you know beyond the fact that those subjects are incredibly interesting and exotic like you said and a lot of people don't get to see them in normal day life i think right. that they like to show things that are new to people mm -hmm. and raise awareness for what's going on in different parts of the world right can you talk a little bit about you, we have the scratch arting mm -hmm. artists we have the photography mm -hmm. right and then we have um oil yes. paintings as well mm -hmm. but we also have sculptures yes right mm -hmm. And being a former Canadian, I love the moose. Yes, Paul oh Reimer's moose. Oh my God, it's just beautiful. The, the the sculpture there is just unbelievable. Everything, if, I'm telling you, if you got to go see this stuff. It's it's it is really a step above what you'll generally think about seeing around uh, in many places. But this is just fabulous. Oh yeah, work. Paul Reimer actually did a, a live bronze pour at the Warren Museum where he showed yeah. his process. Yes, and didn't he provide, you know, when you walk in the front entrance of the building, didn't he have something to do with yes. those sculptures yep. there? Yes, both him and Dale Wheeler. We have a ah. sculpture garden that was uh, put in place last mm -hmm. year. Right. Um, and a lot of the pieces were done by Paul Reimer around the museum and by Dale, Dale Wheeler. Just beautiful. It's incredible. It's a, it's a great entrance to the War Museum. It's really added numerous benefits. Right. I just want to remind our viewers that you were watching the Community Foundation Spotlight on PAC-14. And uh, we appreciate your tuning in. And with us is Katie Travers from the Ward Museum. And she's been talking to us about this great exhibit that's currently on site at the Ward Museum that we're encouraging everyone to go to. It's called Artistic Expression in Nature. And I want to talk to you about someone whose conservation efforts is kind of behind this whole thing. And I think his name is like Robert Lewis Caldwell, yes, right? Yes, Robert. Tell me about this. Robert is And an his efforts. Yeah, what, what, yes, yeah. Robert is an incredible man. Um, Robert went, James Gary Hines and Jan Martin McGuire were two uh, of the artists exhibited, and they go to Africa mm. numerous times. I think that um, mm -hmm. at least, I don't know, 20 times. Um, and Robert went on the last trip to Tanzania with them, and this was his first ever trip oh. to Africa. Okay. So he was very excited. Mm -hmm. And um, on the trip, he discovered he met the CEO and the founder of the African Wildlife Trust. And they, he was providing guide services. Mm -hmm. And he found out that 33 African elephants are killed per day in Tanzania. Good Lord. Yes, and um, the African elephant population used to be in the millions and has been mm -hmm. um, destroyed 99%, leaving about 450,000 African elephants in the entire world. Wow. And so to think that in Tanzania alone, one country, 33 are killed per day. And the reason that they're killed is because of their ivory. Right. Yeah. When Robert came back from the States, he drew uh, a work of art entitled 33 that was inspired by his trip to Africa. Mm -hmm. And so what he now does is he sells these packages, which include the, the picture. It's a limited edition picture. There's only 33 of them. Um, a DVD that includes behind the scenes of the actual drawing of the work. Um, mm -hmm. 
conservation information, pictures from his trip to Africa, and all the proceeds benefit the African Wildlife Trust. Wow. It's incredible. That is incredible. Yeah, and uh, the picture is actually on display at the Warden Museum, and it's it's beautiful. amazing. It's beautiful. Have you seen around town, I think there's a greater awareness on behalf of the public now for what kind of slaughter is actually going on in Africa with all of these magnificent animals, the elephant for the t ivory in their tusks. And have you seen the billboard about, no. it says, um, I am an animal, not a rug, and it has a picture of a tiger on it. Oh, yeah. And there's, they do one with an elephant. Good. With the tusks, and it says, I am not a art form or work of art or yeah. something. You know, I'm an animal. They're just really terrific, and I think they, they get to people. They do. Yeah. They really do, because Robert was talking about how there's this misconception that uh, the, the tusks drop, but in reality, oh. the only way that happens is if they're killed. And then they're taken off. Yeah. Yeah, terrible. And it's just so sad because, mm -hmm. I mean, I would have never known how devastating right. those numbers were until right. I heard from Robert Lewis Caldwell. And That's terrible. And they're beautiful animals. They are beautiful animals. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk a little bit. How can people get involved at the museum if they want to? Oh, there are plenty of ways. First of all, we can come visit the exhibit. Right. Which I said is on exhibit until September, September 8th. Right. And um, the museum store is open year-round. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a great place to shop. It is a In great fact, place to shop. In fact, at the opening event for the Artistic Expression in Nature, which was held there with the Community Foundation and yourselves mm -hmm. and others, uh, you had your store open. We did. And you were selling stuff there. Yes. I mean, you know, one of the gals in our office um, and brought uh, so a little leaf pendant silver. Yes, there's Beautiful. amazing jewelry, yeah. um, amazing souvenirs and stuff like that. Will that benefit the Ward Museum? And there's yeah. a lot of work by the volunteers at the Ward Museum that is for sale. It's right. incredible. Well, I didn't mean to get off track. That's anyway, okay. How can people get involved That's at, the okay. at the museum? That's um, okay. We also have an educational program that's called Drop-In Art. Mm -hmm. And Drop-In Art is held on the third Saturday of every month from 10 a.m. to noon. Mm -hmm. And it's this really cool event where we bring in, once a month, we bring in a artist that has a unique craft. And it's free to the public. And mm -hmm. what happens is the artist comes in and shows you how to do what they are doing. And so every month you get to leave with, you know, a basket or a book printed <laughs> or leaf right. printing. I think that's for June is mm -hmm. leaf printing. Wow. So it's a great way for families to have activities to do with their children. Mm -hmm. And it's free. And what could be better than that, right? Right. So it's great. Not only is it a great museum, but you also offer opportunities to participate in programs with families. Oh, yes. Children mm -hmm. and families and just children. Yep would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's lovely. Yes. And what are the hours of operation of the, f of the museum? The museum is open 10 to 5, Monday mm -hmm. through Friday, mm -hmm. and a Saturday as well, and then Sunday is 12 to 5. 12 to 5, so plenty of opportunities to go. Yes. You need to go. I, you know, I'm wondering, I can't imagine there's not anybody living in the Tri-County area, and even perhaps broader, that hasn't at least been to the Board Museum at least well, once. Well, if they haven't, they need to. Oh, it's an absolute gem that we yes. have here in our community. It, it's world-class art that's in oh, there, yeah. and uh, you need to come out and visit it for mm -hmm. sure. I've How heard do, people say, I've never <laughs> been here, but I'm so glad I came. Yeah, absolutely I, right. How can people support the Ward Museum? What, what can they do? Uh, um, we have volunteer programs. We love right. for people to volunteer. We have a great uh, volunteer pool, and we appreciate them, and they are you know, mm -hmm. part, of our, part of our family. Um, like I said, they can come to the museum store. They can visit the galleries mm -hmm. year-round. Right. Um, they can get involved with the programs. Um, mm -hmm. And right now, if they buy art, that helps the Ward Museum. That's right. And the Ward Museum is generally supported by what it collects mm -hmm. in terms of revenue from sa art sales mm -hmm. and one thing or another. And it has grants, right? What yep. else does it how else can people support? Can people give directly? Yes. To it? Mm hmm All right. So they can, and you have a website? Yes. www.wardmuseum.org. They and can you, uh, donate directly or with artwork or with time. Wonderful. Yes. Terrific. Well, listen, we want to uh, have you give one last opportunity to tell us why it is we need to go out and support this uh, artistic expression in nature's and any, any other last comments you want to make about the Ward Museum? It is just, it's a beautiful place filled with beautiful work and right. beautiful people. And There you go. That's Can't what we're here that. for. All right. So anyway, 
Thanks very much, Katie. It was great having you on the show Thank today. Thank you. And we want to encourage all of the viewers who tuned in this today to go out and go to the Ward Museum and look at all the beautiful art exhibitions that are there and, and really appreciate what it's for and understand the real meaning of why it's being done because it goes to aid uh, all of those animals and environmental issues and one thing or another. So on behalf of Katie and myself, I'm Doug Wilson. Um, we'd like thank you for joining us this morning on uh, the Community Foundation Spotlight and have a great day. Thank you. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC 14? To get started, contact us at 410-677-5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC 14 is a great way to connect with your community.